You thought you could dish this? This is high power. Listen. Who say my space in the cave or room in the attic? Killers of the moon were working hard to erase this body. I did enough by reading my poetry till I listened to my heartbeat. I rise to flip the generic narratives in South Africa heroes got no biographies. No prophecy, my truth is naked, shaking the table. <laughs> Just call this high power. We got nothing less than high power. You thought you could dish this? Listen, this is high power. The sun is burning, trees are falling, rise from ashes of fade in the moon. Alchemy, high power. Kings, bishop, knights, baron, villain, slaves, level. Castes, clans, tribes, male, female, labels. Heterosexuals, homosexuals, fake identities. Waters, crystals, mountains, trees. They don't care about no man's nature. Yeah, we kill each other over tags. We rape in the name of culture. After playing games in the dark, screams fade in silence. Insane monsters in the kids park. They last scenes of violence. Survival, protection of pack, state of fright, greed, defense. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who's alive? Who's gone? Out of time, is there's the difference, and before you know it, the truth spills out like vomit. Evolution, creation, that's all existence built on. Yeah, in reality, the of annihilations will survive instincts from. Hell is the other the poet takes on. It's who the media fingers the mother shits on. Got a heavy pass to my shoulder, chaotic present of mine. I'm my own future's holder, so with a little time at a time, I put my existence into art. It's for my experience that I write. My body's a compass, my mind is a theater, any time is your time. I dance to maintain balance, my question for a living, to find a rhyme. One step at a time, like an artist walking on a tight rope. I draw stars like pictures in white on the blackboard. Perhaps a reminder of a previous life in a black hole. <laughs> it's a black mirror thing. Reflection, question of one another. Who's on the other side? The sun is burning, trees are falling, the rise from ashes are fading in the morning. I'll keep it high power.
Hi everybody. Hi. How are you guys doing? Um, it's great to be here. I mean, it's funny as well to say here because the hair doesn't request space anymore. So hair is everywhere. Hair is where you are. And I am in Rwanda right now, Kigali. And right now the world is going crazy. Um, we're seeing a lot of protests. And I can say from my community of artists, I think on, on Tuesday when I opened my Instagram account, I mean, like, all my feeds were, I mean, it was just like a long, dark feed, you know, I was like, okay. And now this is happening, people are responding. Because usually in situations where there's chaos in a part of the world, and most time the other part of the world will be like, ah, that's not my fight. What do I have to do with this, you know? So, and even like worldwide, like we're seeing right now, mass movements, people protesting against police brutality, against racism, because racism is like, it's the biggest virus we have right now, you know? I mean, people, people were like, okay, we have a virus going on right now, but it's an even bigger virus that we have to deal with, which is like, it's been there for years, for centuries, you know? And, from Rwanda, it's hard to to say exactly what he what he means because we understand what pain is, we understand what being marginalized, what being uh, thrown out of your uh, space because of what you look like. You know, we've had a genocide in this country. You know, it was all based on these uh, racist theories and, and practices uh, that were designed by the colonialists. You know. For us, it was more about the, the, the height or the nose, the size of your nose, or the, the color of your gum. All these things are kind of, you know, when you put it together, you're like, really? Like, I can travel anywhere in Africa and they would never tell where I'm from, you know, which means that like, I see people as black people, we all black people, you can't tell the difference, you know, like. But when you start to get into those details that were instructed to us and they were, you know, like over and over time, it's just, you realize actually even today that the way we deal with each other, there's still like remnants of that. And a, a lot actually of choices of, of, of racism, even within us as black people, you know? Um, for example, if you talk about what it is to be a beautiful person, to be physically beautiful, you know, all these reflections and, and a lot of it, you will see like, trains of black women, especially black women, um, bleaching because TV has been selling us that to be beautiful, you have to look occasion, uh, relaxing hair, all these things that, are the, I mean, what we see, they are actually the consequences of racial um, kind of programming that we're going through over the years, over time, you know? And so, um, yeah. And as I go through it personally, first of all, you know, I have to deal with so much because even if I think about religion, you know, you go to church and they teach you that, you know, to this guy from this part of the world. So, and, and the design, it just reflects like oneness, you know, so it's just hard, you know, but some people are trying this, some people are trying to get away from the brainwashing and, you know, take charge question, who am I? Who am I without any reference to what has been instructed to my system, you know? And so another question is like, what does Afrofuturism mean to me? Afrofuturism is, I mean, it is the future um, where Africa is at the heart of it, of the movement, you know? Because if you look around, um, there's a lot of chaos and also chaos in terms of how space is occupied by human beings, you know. The difference between Africa right now and most places that it still feels natural in so many places, you know. So people looking for a connection with nature, with self, um, Africa is pretty much the place to be, you know. Uh, whether, whereas when you go in other places that, you know, the land is being designed and cut, and you know, there's a lot of concrete. And people live in boxes and stuff. So it's like you have to integrate the system to learn how to live in it, how to survive in it, you know. Um, and 
Africa is still open, is still, you know, there's still a lot to discover in terms of what can we um, advance as an idea of what is the next life, you know, it's very easy to do here because there's also a lot of empty spaces to to occupy in different ways with ideas, with with uh, art, with politics, um, there's so much. So for me, I'm very much interested in systems. And, you know, the question is always like, how do we get out of this system and what system is best? So that's the question, you know, like I'm trying to describe as well. I'm working on that. My friends are working on it. I just working on that, you know, and I think it's good already to be at that position where you can start to think about the next life, you know, um, because usually as black people, we are reacting to the current and the past, you know, and so we put us in like very, very, um, bad positions, you know, positions that nobody want to be in to start with, you know. Uh, and I'm talking about this in general, not just uh, where I live, not just because there's racism in the United States or, or in Europe, but even in Africa itself, you know. Um, so to think differently is just, first of all, I think you would have to live a different life, you know, to believe, to understand um, the possibilities that there are, the alternatives that there are, you know. But um, it's complex, but people are working on that. Artists are trying their best. Like they are, there are ideas, you know, that Africa is the future. So that's already a good start, like, you know, to think, to reflect, and to try to come up with, you know, um, what I may say, alternatives. Um, is there any other question? Can I tell you about uh, research about the cultural history, the dynamic cultural performances? Well, so, uh, long story short, I grew up in exile and I've been traveling around Africa trying to look for a home because, yeah, because my grandparents were thrown away from their home. So we've been looking all this time. And then, you know, at some point, it was the Russian War after the genocide. So the country established some sense of peace and stability. And so we came, and we we'll like to say came back. So I guess the spirit came back, but my grandparents came back, literally. And so I got here, and, you know, we learned French, we learned this English, these languages, but it's hard that you feel home, but you cannot interact. With your own people because Kinyarwanda is the main language, and Kinyarwanda to be honest is one of those coded languages on the planet. Because some references date are like 600 years, 400 years, and if you don't have the ability to decode a lot of things, you know, you'll never be able to understand. So, this is why when I perform in English, I really feel like it's kind of, you know, it's kind of washed off. I, just, I know that. I try my best, but also at the same time, I'm learning these languages. So eventually, in the future, I really want to make performances in Kinyarwanda, mostly, mostly. And um, use Kinyarwanda references, you know, um, run the references. So I've been doing research personally, traveling across the country to meet elderly people in their 70s, 80s, and ask them what was life before uh, what we call independence, you know, what was it like to see the first, not the second wave of colonizers, how was he working with them, what is their perception towards themselves, what is the identity of them, what is the Rwanda, for example. Because right now, I can tell you that, you know, I am a mixed culture person, you know. I consume a lot of culture, especially from the United States, you know, hip hop and music and stuff and TV, so I just needed to find uh, my roots, and I went, I did, it was a hard journey, I almost died on the way, and eventually I came to the answer from the pressures that I had. And it has given me a lot of strength, a lot of courage to continue to work, to continue to create. It's a lot of inspiration. Like I have a huge stock of inspiration. You know, I can just, anytime I'm thirsty, I can bear, you know, I quench my thirst and create. All right. So I want to say thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you tomorrow around the same time. And all right, cheers, be well. My name is Eric Wanky, I'm from Morocco. Bye.